In his 1961 farewell address, President Eisenhower issued a dire warning about what he called the military-industrial complex, a formidable union of defense contractors and the armed forces. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Eisenhower's concern was the possibility that as the military and the arms industry gained more power, they would be a threat to democracy, with civilians losing control of the military-industrial complex. In his remarks, Eisenhower also explained how the military-industrial complex had developed. Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments industry. American makers of plowshares could, with time and as required, make swords as well. But we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Here, Eisenhower points to a new development. Prior to the Second World War, the United States neither had a standing army nor a permanent armaments industry. What this had meant was that in times of war, companies like Ford would switch their production and build everything from military jeeps to bombers, only to switch back to the production of ordinary cars once war had ended. Similarly, in times of war, the U.S. military would massively increase its troops, only to draw down the numbers of soldiers by the time war had ended. After World War II, and with the onset of the Cold War, however, this pattern changed. American swordsmiths did not switch back to making plowshares. Troop numbers were not drawn down, and military spending never reduced to pre-World War II levels. The global rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union involved a constant arms race. The actual and perceived threat of superpower conflict created an atmosphere where there was a constant perception of the need for sustained military procurement. It was due to these factors that President Eisenhower introduced the concept of the military-industrial complex to the public consciousness in 1961. In the U.S. context, the trope of the military-industrial complex is oftentimes extended to the military-industrial congressional complex, adding the U.S. Congress to form a three-sided relationship termed an iron triangle. These relationships include political contributions, political approval of military spending, lobbying to support bureaucracies, and oversight of the industry. More broadly, it includes the entire network of contracts and money flows amongst defense contractors, the Pentagon, Congress, and the executive branch. The shared interests of this informal alliance in combination with the actual and perceived threats of Soviet expansionism produced historically unprecedented levels of military spending. This graph shows the development of U.S. defense spending from the end of the Second World War until 2017. What is striking here is how, across seven decades, on aggregate, defense spending has grown on a massive scale. And it allows us to put Eisenhower's warnings into context. He issued his warnings in January 1961, that is, in the very early phase of the Cold War. The first big spike here was the Korean War in the early 1950s. The second spike reflects the rise in defense spending due to the Vietnam War. The third spike shows the increased defense spending in the 1980s under President Ronald Reagan. And the final spike shows the rise in defense spending after 9-11 overall. 
And what is highlighted in red is the actual cost of the US wars in Afghanistan and Iraq alone. The general growth in defense spending by the United States becomes even more striking when we compare it to the defense spending of other military powers in the world. In absolute numbers, the United States has the biggest defense budget in the world. In fact, its annual military expenditure has consistently dwarfed the combined military budgets of the biggest military powers. To give you an example, in 2011, the United States defense budget accounted for about 47% of the world's total military expenditures. That meant that the United States spent more on its military than the next 13 nations combined. In 2013, the US spent more on its military than China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, France, the UK, Germany, Japan and India together. And in 2014, US military expenditures accounted for 37% of what the world spent on defense, which was more than the next eight highest military spenders combined. This data shows us that by a massive margin, the US is the biggest military actor around the block. And this also sheds an interesting light onto the warnings Eisenhower voiced already back in 1961, when he spoke of the acquisition of unwarranted influence by the military-industrial complex. If anything, the potential for what he called the disastrous rise of misplaced power has not only persisted, but has grown dramatically since 1961.